I imagine a lot of people saw Greg Smallwood on social media talking about some of the changes that Marvel Comics made to his art. Apparently, he had uh, he was having a child after he finished the lecture at Black, White, and Blood issue that he had could completed. Apparently, they took some exception with the physical characteristics of the, some of the Asian characters, and they made some changes. Here to talk with me about that is professional comic book artist and certified Asian, Tim Lim. How you doing, Tim? I'm fantastic. I hope you're doing well on your side of the globe, Wes. We're doing all right here in Asia. You know Greg Smallwood, correct? Is he a jerk? Is he, no, is he he's a really nice here? guy. No, he's extremely nice. We actually did a store signing together about three and a half or four years ago. Just a very pleasant guy, and so is his sister. You can tell that this upset him, that they went out there and they changed his artwork, which I completely understand. But if you work for Marvel or DC, they're going to change your art sometimes, right? Yeah, it happens. That's the point of having an editor. Obviously, they have a degree of control over what is written and what is drawn. So editorial changes are obviously nothing new and nothing surprising. Now, this really isn't an editorial like he messed up a character or anything. I think they did this because he thought they thought his illustration of specifically Asian features being their eyes were maybe potentially insensitive. Which I think is kind of ridiculous. I live in Asia. My my wife is Asian. My children are Asian. They're quite aware that they have uh, stereotypical Asian eyes. And what they've done ended up being so much worse. Looking at this first picture that they provide. So they started throwing white where like eyelid was supposed to be. And it, it kind of makes the character look like a demon. Yeah, it's funny because Greg Smallwood's art is very good and his ability to he reminds me a lot of Alex Toth in the way that he renders faces. He he knows the simplicity of line and he maximizes it to its best potential. And just looking at the art, just a cursory glance at it from what I saw last night and some other shots that were posted this morning, or at least I saw this morning. His renderings were fine. You could tell the ethnicity of the characters just looking at them. And I think that he conveyed them in a very respectful, I don't even want to say dignified, because I don't think there was any stereotyping there. They looked the ethnicity. This isn't Looney Tunes during the 50s or the 40s, no. you know what I mean? No, obviously not. And this is one of those cases where editorial, I think, definitely made a very poor decision. And I think that some of this reflects um, the overcorrection that a lot of them do because they have no idea when it comes to cultural sensitivity. They just don't know what is and what isn't offensive. And honestly, what he had done previously, there was nothing offensive about it. The characters look great. I think that they, they fit the setting that they're supposed to be in. But it's just pretty funny because when you look at, for example, what you were talking about, the very first shot is uh, Greg Smallwood's original art of Electra's hand on a cheek of a young girl. And in the correction that the Marvel bullpen did, they basically took some digital white out and gave her more sclera, <laughs> exposing more of the pupils. And anyone with any editorial or art experience should know that when you do that, you actually make the character look more evil. And so the little girl like doesn't have doesn't have any type of warmth or feeling in her um, face. It's all taken out, and I look at that, and on a cursory look, I think, wow, this kid is creepy. They look like someone from a Junji Ito book. Yeah, it's Damien or something. You know, it's the devil incarnate type of thing that when you're looking at it. And another thing that's weird with these these corrections, when they're made by, quite frankly, really scared, um, yuppie white people, is they end up being far worse than the original almost every single time. They're almost saying that in order for this image of this young Asian girl to not be offensive, she has to look in their mind, potentially less Asian. A lot of times, either you have a, an overcorrection or an undercorrection instead of kind of letting the work speak for itself. If you have a character, like there's, there's a lot of artists who do this, I think um, what they'll do is they have a template for characters that they draw. They have in their mind a way of drawing, let's say, a handsome 30-year-old man or a handsome 20-year-old girl. And essentially what you do is you change some of the um, the superficial characteristics such as hair color or skin color. You don't really worry too much about the anthropological details for race and ethnicity because that's not your point. Your point is you just want to have an ensemble cast. And as far as the varying degree, you just want to change the superficial details. So what will happen is editorial will come in and they'll say, well, they don't look black enough or they don't look Asian enough. Hey, let's just change this. And you end up becoming, in a way, more stereotyped than you would... Uh, that you would have been originally had you not changed it at all. 
versus some other people, what they do is they do a very good job conveying ethnicities, but then editorial wants to overcorrect by putting in these strange changes that basically um, it just really bastardizes the work from how, from its original intent. And with the case of Greg Smallwood, like I said, very accomplished artist, very talented. I don't yeah. think any of this needed to be corrected to begin with. There was um, in, in one of the examples, I think it was the second one he posted, it's the mm -hmm. same girl. And again, her facial expression, a lot of warmth because of the way she's smiling. He puts just enough in the in the white of the eyes. Just to, in the corner. Just in the corner. But in their change, she's she basically looks kind of bug eyed now <laughs> because it looks like the Joker or something. Yeah. And f and funnily enough, she looks more white. Like yes. she, she doesn't really look like an Asian girl in their correction. The other one, which has less to do with ethnicity and more to do with, I think, just normal censorship, is what appears to be some sort of um, uh, wild uh, lady in a cave or something. And she has her hair covering up a little bit of her naughty bits. Mm -hmm. But in their overcorrection, they put too much hair to cover it. So it's kind of difficult to tell. I mean, you look at it long enough and you can tell it's hair. But from your first it looks glance, like a really lame ass bathing suit. Right. You might think it's some sort of uh, what John the Baptist wore, for example, yeah. like a hair shirt or something. And it, it does a disservice to his work because the idea was the hair itself was enough to tastefully cover up what needed to be covered up, but also convey the point that she's nude. Whereas in their correction, you have really no idea what's going on until you take a, another second to look at it and see what's actually happening. And also just the idea with a, an artist like Greg Smallwood, who they had talked to and they said, we would like you to make corrections. His wife was about to have a baby. He went and he did the corrections and he actually sent them to them. Apparently they didn't receive them or they ignored them and they did their own corrections, which ended up making his art look like shit. Like he's not like a Tumblr artist. Obviously it's still better than that, but it doesn't look like Greg Smallwood art. He doesn't normally have those, those issues and his name is still on the book and people are going to associate these because not everyone's going to see this video and they're going to be like, well, what, what happened to Greg Smallwood's art? He used to, used to be perfect. Yeah. And that's really unfortunate because unless you're paying attention to uh, online chatter and the day to day news, this is one of those instances where you just might not know about it. Um, I remember being a, when I was a kid and I'd read comics, there were certain issues where I, there was an artist who I would follow. And in, in one issue, I loved the art. And the second issue seemed like the art uh, really went downhill. And I would find out later on that it wasn't the artist who contributed to that. It was mostly the inker, because at the time, I really didn't really know how inkers worked and how the entire process would go. So every cog in the machine has to be working in sync for everything to go correctly, or else you'd have people who, uh, for one reason or the other, are going to fault the artist as a result of it. Now, I think that um, he posted something where he said that I think in the reprints and in future editions of it, I think it would be his original art. But unfortunately, yes. in this version, it is not the the art that we, we should be getting, which then begs the question, well, it's good that you have that correction in, um, in the post-edit and in future printings. But in my opinion, like, the, in a way... There the are people that paid done. for this book because Greg Smallwood's name was on it, and they like Greg Smallwood's art. Are they going to get a refund? Or are they going to get a new book? They deserve right. it. Right, exactly. And I'm hearing that the digital editions, I think, are going to feature the original art. But like you said, um, for people out there who do keep up with the the individualized issues as they come out, it does them a disservice. But hey, who knows? Like in in, in some sense, it might also be worth something because it was it is uh, a mistake, in my a opinion, mistake. that <laughs> that was made by editorial. As far as like the depictions of ethnicities are concerned, part of that issue does revolve around the the, criti the criticism of it and what people think is offensive. And unfortunately, I think that's a little bit more complicated topic to tackle simply because we're really do going down the rabbit hole of politics and pop culture. At this, this is point. an offended generation of people. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I mean, for example, like in typically in Asian countries, pale skin is considered to be more beautiful. And that has nothing necessarily to do with the influence of, say, quote, unquote, white culture. That's just how it always has been. It was normally associated with aristocracy because the more pale your skin was, the more kind of ivory and creamy it was. It was a typical standard of beauty. And it was also um, indicative of 
again, the aristocracy, because it meant that you had wealth and therefore you didn't work outside. And um, therefore your, your skin was not as, as cracked or, or a different pigmentation. So there are some standards that are not necessarily influenced by the West. They just happen to be something that um, culturally has been done for quite some time. But like you said, uh, me personally, I think it, this would not probably be a good time to be in comics. Uh, ironically, I think that if I were to be in mainstream comics, it would probably just pigeonhole me into <laughs> doing nothing but um, Asian characters. Oh, yeah, you'd be doing, you'd only be doing Asian characters. You'd be doing uh, Afra. <laughs> you'd be doing all the new uh, Korean and, and Japanese and Chinese characters they created at Marvel. Well, the funny thing, too, is that if you look at manga, for example, I mean, they all pretty much have a very similar aesthetic. They all have typically high cheekbones. They have big eyes. They have proportions that, while good for the uh, the medium that they're in, obviously there's a lot of liberty taken in terms of their depiction. And yet, I mean, this is this is stuff created by j the Japanese, by manga, manhwa artists, so people from Korea and um, even some Chinese artists. And there's not there's no cultural sensitivity as far as the depiction of their ethnicity is concerned. So I think that that side of things is definitely something that the West is very hypersensitive about. And unfortunately, um, this is just one of those instances where it just rears its ugly head. Yeah, they, they shouldn't have made these changes. They made everything worse, to be completely honest. And I can understand if someone hands you a, a caricature of an Asian person like they used to do in Looney Tunes or back in the day where you had these real squinty eyes and these big buck teeth or whatever. Yeah, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, harmful images that, that uh, likely you don't want associated with your brand here. But these were just pretty realistic images using the color palette available black and white. Right, exactly. And even between certain characters that he depicts, so for example, um, they made a change to a bald man. And you can look at him in one certain way, and you can definitely see that he's Asian, but you can also look at him in another way, and you might not really be able to tell. And you see that all the time, too, in different cultures. You have some people who are, say, Hispanic, and um, they look, quote, unquote, white. So the, again, these are these superficial details that I think people pay way too much attention to, but part of it has to do with the culture that we're in right now. It, it's all based on the superficial aspects rather than just... I think um, everyone's just trying character. to not get canceled. Well, that too. And again, that's why I feel like this would not be a good time <laughs> to be... It, it's a strange time to be working in the mainstream comics industry simply because of all of the fear of cancellation and um, being judged by your peers as being something that you're not. Yeah, I mean, we it, it goes for everybody. We saw it happen to Gail Sabote, who kind of started all this with their fridging articles or whatever online, and they got called out for the transphobic images of, who was it, Plastic Man. So uh, it, it's a strange beast. I think Greg Smallwood probably deserves an apology. They should have done this to this art. And hopefully the editorial staff at Marvel learns a lesson on this one. I think the 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 thing that's even crazier about it is that it was actually Marvel's – I don't want to say it was their editorial department, but it was basically a subdivision where it was their standards and practices. So they flagged it, and then they said, this is a problem and it needs to be fixed. But in apparently the letter from the editor or the response, um, they basically said, like, oh, there was an email miscommunication, and we're going to make sure that in reprints, we're going to have a version that you like. Because apparently, like you said, he had actually made some of those corrections on his own uh, mm -hmm. to be sent in, not to have them digitally altered by someone else. So apparently it's like, how much control does standards and practices actually have if this is not something that this was not their bottom line as far as like these corrections are concerned, that there was some amelioration that could be had. So I think that some of that pushback does need to occur because obviously there there's a line that needs to be drawn in the sand. And if an artist wants to uh, stick up for their work. And in the case of Greg Smallwood, I think that that is very apropos. I think he should be given his own chance to make those revisions. Um, I think that that needs to occur um, in order for the original work to stand on its own. As I mentioned earlier, Tim is a wonderful comic book artist himself. In fact, we just talked the other day about Iconic Comics in Common America, his Kickstarter, which is well over $110,000 right now. If you haven't watched this, check it out. There might be a comic book that you want to support on Kickstarter right now from Tim Lim. He's a great dude. 